Stone Ocean is the sixth part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and features a lot of firsts for the series. First female protagonist being Jolene Cujo, and the first time a JoJo didn't have a seemingly overpowered stand from the very beginning. That being Stone Free, and its ability to control string. Not to stop time, heal any wound, or create life with a myriad of associated abilities. None of those. Just simple string. And I kind of like it. String is a big key thematic element in the part because it ties into fate, gravity, and bloodlines like a Gordian knot. But we're not here to discuss any of those boring topics like philosophy that I could just read off of the JoJo Wiki for 15 minutes. We're here to learn some actual science. So today, I wanted to figure out how powerful Stone Free actually is. Now you could look at its feats from the stand and see how they size up to other characters, but those aren't hard numbers. That's also super subjective, considering some uses of string in the story are well within the user's knowledge and abilities, like in the Sky High fight, and others seemingly want to showcase themes rather than a progress of the character like in Sea Moon. So what we can do for this episode of Sand Science is determine what type of material the string is likely made of, what the tensile strength of those materials are, and a fun question that I just had personally. Could Jolene cause the dinosaurs to go extinct? Because apparently by clumping these strings together and punching really really fast, it has the force of a small meteor. I'm always looking for an excuse to talk about dinosaurs, so let's get into it. What is string? I know, it's a simple question, but we really need to start at the basics if we're going to build up to our answer. And it's a question I've never really asked myself until working on this video. I mean, string was string. Unfortunately, that's the curse of knowledge. The more you know, the more you know you don't know. See, we all have computers in our pockets, but do we really understand how they work? And I hope through these videos, we can piece together bits of understanding to get a bigger picture of how our beautiful world works. String is any material consisting of threads that are twisted and wound together to form a relatively long axial length compared to a thin radial length. The basic shape of a string is a cylinder, so the calculations that we're going to make on tensile strength are going to be done with that simple model. This is the spherical cow or the spherical raquel of this video. This is a little different than the scenario we covered with Zawaldo's oxygen tanks. Those were coaxial cylinders, meaning there was an inner cylinder inside the big cylinder that was hollowed out. But for the simple model here, we'll be using solid cylinders. Stop ultimate tensile strength is the ability to resist breaking under tensile stress. This is defined as the load, or the force applied to the material, divided by the cross-sectional area, or the area of a slice out of the shape. Now you have to consider tensile elongation, or the percentage of length that a material can extend before breaking. While the yarn that you might buy from a Hobby Lobby isn't strong itself, there are a few common materials that I would call super strings. These materials tend to be the strongest in terms of tensile strength, and there are three of them that I want to tie into this discussion. Silk, nylon, and Kevlar. Stone-free string exhibits traits from all of these materials. Want me to ruin your next meal by learning how silk is made? Well, if you're already watching this video, you don't have much of a choice. We all know the soft feeling of silk, but rarely do we consider where it comes from. Silk is produced from the offspring of the Bombyx mori, or a domesticated silk moth. The insect lays about 500 eggs and immediately dies because they're pretty hardcore. Those eggs then hatch into silkworms, and as the worm grows, it prepares for metamorphosis into a moth, so it creates a cocoon out of silk. Silk is actually made of digested mulberry leaves, the primary diet of the silkworms, protein, and saliva. So sleep soundly in your silk nightgowns, knowing that it was made out of bug spit. Yeah. <laughs> then, before the pupas are able to hatch, they're actually cooked alive, with hot air boiled, and finally reeled into yarn, and whoa, did this video take a dark turn. But Silk's ultimate tensile strength is 0.5 gigapascals, and it elongates up to 15% of its original length. Interesting factoid, because this video isn't filled with enough of them already. Did you know that the bristles of a toothbrush are made of nylon? And that just so happens to be the next string we're going to talk about. Creating nylon, such as Nylon 6, and ballistic nylon specifically for this discussion, is a fascinating process that I didn't know until now. First made in 1935, it's what's known as a thermoplastic, or a pliable, bendable type of plastic. When you combine adipic acid, AA, with hexamethylene diamine, 
HMD, under pressure heat water and more salt than my takes on Stone Ocean CGI created, you can form chains known as polymers. These chains line up carbons, exactly six of them, hence the name, Nylon 6, on the molecular level to create strong bonds that wouldn't be there in the material naturally. Ballistic nylon is actually weaved into vests to protect you against heat and shrapnel, but not fast, penetrating projectiles like bullets. The ultimate tensile strength of nylon is 70 megapascals, and it elongates up to 90% of its original length. So that's a key difference between nylon and silk. Silk has a larger tensile strength, but elongates to a shorter distance, while nylon is the opposite. Smaller tensile strength elongates to a longer distance. Maybe we can find some middle ground with Kevlar. Kevlar is also a synthetic polymer, like nylon, but comes from a reaction between 1,4-phenylenediamine. Uh, okay, 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 forgive me, I'm gonna butcher these chemical names. It comes from 1,4-phenylenediamine with terephthalamine, making it a polyperaphenylene terephthalamine. That is a mouthful, so now I know why they just call it Kevlar. Kevlar was created in 1965 to fulfill the role ballistic nylon failed at, making something bulletproof. Kevlar is lighter, operates at higher temperatures than nylon, but actually gets stronger when you reach colder cryogenic temperatures. Kevlar is typically woven more than it's strung. However, in Japanese archery, kudo, Kevlar can be used for the hemp as bowstrings. It has an ultimate tensile strength of 350 megapascals and elongates to 1.5% of its original length. When Jolene uses her string in more directly combative roles, like in the Goo Goo Dolls fight and in Sky High, it's shown to have the properties and versatility of silk. However, when she weaves it into a web for her strings to skate across the pond in the Foo Fighters fight, or detect movements during the Limp Biscuits fight, the string portrayed acts more like nylon. But in defensive roles, like taking a bullet during the Manhattan transfer fight, or the implosion effect of Sea Moon, the string is obviously acting like Kevlar. So as you can see, we're all over the place with what this string could be. If I had to make a guess, the string is most like silk. However, if you want to explain this discrepancy away, you could use the fact that Stone Free manipulates all types of strings, regardless of what they're made of. Which does have a bit of backing, considering the baseball trick that was used during the Marilyn Manson fight, as she has the ability to manipulate the waxed red thread. And that makes her stand a bit more powerful than just basic string. So you might be wondering, can't we just combine all of these strings into one super synthetic ultimate string? I don't know, I'm not a chemist. Physicists hate chemistry, but I always wanted to grow up to be a paleontologist, so I have to ask the question, the important question, the most important question of this entire video. If you clump these strings together into about the size of a fist, how fast would you have to travel to cause an explosion to create that of the extinction of the dinosaurs? Commonly known through the Chicxulub Love meteor strike at the Yucatan Peninsula around 65.5 million years ago. Now that meteor that hit that peninsula was 10 kilometers or 6 miles across and hit limestone, which under 10,000 degrees Celsius of heat and immense pressure resulted in vast amounts of sulfur being blasted into the atmosphere that blotted out the sun and led to nuclear winter and acid rain. Does this ever happen when Jolene punches someone with her aura rush? No. Not at all. How fast would she have to be going? Let me get my calculator right now. Using our trusty kinetic energy formula, Ke equals one half mv squared, you can separate for v, giving v equals the square root of two Ke over m. Now, the explosion that killed the dinosaurs is estimated to be equivalent to 72 teratons of TNT, 4.5 billion times more energy than was in the Hiroshima bomb, which clocks in to be three times 10 to the 23rd joules of energy. Jolene herself weighs 58 kilograms, and the average percent of mass the female fist makes up is 0.56% of the total weight of the person, meaning the fist doing the punchy punchy has a mass of 0.33 kilograms. If we plug everything in, the square root of 2 times 3 times 10 to the 23rd over 0.33 equals 1.234 times 10 to the 12th meters per second. Jolene's fist would have to travel 1.2 trillion meters per second to deal that much damage. So yeah, sounds totally legit. Uh, if you ignore a little thing called the speed of light. 
But that was probably the least JoJo JoJo video that ever JoJo'd. I don't know. I like these videos. And hopefully you got to learn something using JoJo as a conduit for that. Please let me know if you like the video down in the comments below. Here's some other stand science videos that you could check out, including Heavy Weather, which for me was one of my favorites. I know you'll love it. I hope you all enjoy the new batch of Stone Ocean episodes when they come in, oh, I don't know, approximately never. Have a beautiful doing, and I'll see you all next time.